Written by rail. Welcome to War on the Line Day, September 15, 1991, on the 10 mile long Mid Hans Railway southwest of London with a direct connection to British Rail at Alton. Vintage diesels have their place on preserved railways in Britain. Here we have Class 25, number D5217, built in 1966 in Derby. One of 327 built with Saltzer, 1,250 horsepower diesel locomotive. The maximum speed is 90 miles per hour. Here comes War Department engine at 210 for the Langmore Military Railway and our final arrival and departure at Ropley Station. Today is the 16th of September, 1991, Monday, as we journey northwest of London on diesel multiple units to the Severn Valley Railway at Kidderminster. Kidderminster Town Station is the newest station on the line, built in 1984, yes, that's 1984, when the railway expanded to its final length of 16 miles. Here's our first engine of the day, Great Western Engine number 4566, a 262 tank engine built in 1924 at Swindon.
The Severn Valley Railway utilizes an ex-Great Western line built from 1858 to 1862 and became a preservation railway beginning in 1970. Stations along the line include Kidderminster, Bodley, Arley, Highley, Hampton Lode, and Bridge North. Hampton Load Station, one of the rural stations that the Brits just love to refurbish. Great Western 060 tank engine, a pannier tank, built in 1949 at Swindon, arriving at Hampton Lode. Bridge North is the final station on the line and also home to the railway shops. Here we see War Department number 600, a 210 by the name of Gordon, built at Riddles of Glasgow in 1943.
The shops at Bridge North are used to refurbish, repair, rebuild, and actually build new railway components to keep the Severn Valley Line in operation. One final shot of our train leaving Hampton Load Station and the end of our visit to the Severn Valley Railway. Tuesday, September 17th, 1991, we journey southeast of London to visit Leeds Castle near Maidstone. And to visit the Kent and East Sussex. Leeds Castle has its roots back to at least the 8th century. Most of what we see today dates from the early 1800s with details such as windows and fountains going back much further. It was home or home away from home for most of the kings of England up to Edward VI in 1552. From then until 1974 it was under private ownership and is now owned by the Leeds Castle Foundation. the Kent and East Sussex Railway. Tenderton Town. The Kent and East Sussex Railway was built in 1903 and the station here at Tenderton Town was built in 1905, two years after the railway was finished.
This Hazlitt engine, number 23, was built in Leeds in 1952. Currently the line is seven miles long, running from Tenderton to Northiam. The Cantonese Sussex is a typical branch line railway. It was built to the less stringent Light Railways Act rules of 1896, allowing less stringent rulings. Here's a view of Maidstone East British Rail Station.
September 19th, 1991, in a visit to Brighton. It's the 150th anniversary of the opening of the railway lines from Brighton to London. The Lighten, London, Brighton, and South Coast Railway. Two of their steam locomotives represented here by the Stepney from the Bluebell Railway, an 060 Terrier class built in 1875, and the Gladstone, an 042 built in Brighton in 1882. Ostensibly, our reason for visiting was to visit the Brighton Pavilion um, with its unique architecture. Uh, British rules do not allow videos inside, so we don't see too much here. But almost Moorish or Eastern design. Of course, when I come to any place such as Brighton, my reason for being there is to see railways. And in this case, the Volks Railway, opened in 1833, Britain's first electric railway. Brighton, of course, is a famous resort seaside type city. And here is the Palace Pier, the last of the great piers in the Brighton area. Next, a visit to the Bluebell Railway. The Bluebell Railway is England's oldest preserved railway. It began operations in 1960. Engine number 58850, a London, an, excuse me, a North London Railway Dock Class 060 tank engine built in 1880 at Bow.
you put on that fire? This line began as the Lewes and East Grinstead Railway, which was backed by the London, Brighton and South Coast. The L and E G R opened in 1882. The Bluebell in 1991 ran over four and a half miles of track between Sheffield Park and Horstead Keys. Their final goal is to reach the British Rail at East Grinstead. and are not so rail-oriented transportation to and from the Bluebell. Well, now it's the 20th of September, a Friday, and I'm out at Penzance, which is the farthest south as you one can go on British Rail, 327 miles from London, five and a half hours with 15 stops. A breezy but sunny day. Here we see a diesel multiple unit train leaving from Penzance. the class 8 shunter Here's our class 43 I believe IC125 one of two locomotives on this train this one's called the top of the pops as we zip back towards London.
extremely well patronized first class car. This is Bodmin Parkway. We'll return here on a less bright and sunny day in our next tape. and also a view down below us of the Lou branch of British Rail. We're now approaching Plymouth and the Royal Albert Bridge. Mr. I.K. Brunels, probably sir, I'm not sure. Very interesting tubular bridge, which was built in 1859 and connects Cornwall with Devon. It bridges the river Tamar, or Tamar. Here we are zipping along near Newton Abbott on the ex-Great Western Line, also one of Brunel's railway and engineering masterpieces. It was a seven-foot gauge, I believe, and uh, this section of it was actually run by pneumatic compression Victoria Underground Station. It's now Saturday, September 21st, and we'll be taking the Underground to Paddington Station. We've arrived at Paddington Station in time to catch our train out towards Wales.
the 0925 to fish guard. Again with the typical IC125 set. At present, in 1991 anyway, Paddington Station has no electrification. But eventually, there will be an electrified line from here to Heathrow. Now you can tell we're in Wales. Bilingual signs. Joining, journeying to the quaint little town of Thlanethli. No, I don't have a lisp. That seems to be the way it's pronounced. And we'll view an IC-125 train arriving and departing at Thlanethli. <laughs> The Class 43 HST, or High Speed Train Power Cars, were built from 1976 to 82 by British Rail Engineering Limited at Crewe. Each of the unit has a 2250 horsepower Paxton Valencia diesel running at 1500 RPMs and can attain a top speed of 125 miles an hour. Central Wales is where we're heading next, and here comes a train of DMUs, a class 108, builder's dates right around 1959 to early 1960, powered by two Leyland diesels of 150 horsepower each.
We're journey journeying northward through central Wales to Shrewsbury. And our arrival at Shrewsbury. The next day, September 22nd, a Sunday, I journey to London Liverpool Street Station, which was in the process of being rebuilt in 1991. to catch a train up to Norwich. Here's some Class 86 electrics on what was the Great Eastern Line. At Norwich, I changed to a DMU to arrive here at Sheringham on the North Sea. Here's a British Rail DMU arriving at the very rudimentary station at Sheringham.
In fact, all it is is a platform. The journey here was to visit the North Norfolk Railway, part of the Midland and Great Northern Joint Railway. The diesel switching here, number 12131, was a Class 11 built in 1952 in Darlington with a 350 horsepower English electric diesel and it was built for the London, Midland, and Scottish Railway. Another Huslet 060. This time named the Ring Haw, built in 1940. After a run around at Holt, we head back towards Sheringham and get a few views of the North Sea and surrounding areas. like some really tough fairways.
and our arrival back in Sheringham. Back at London Liverpool State Street, we see a few electric multiple unit trains. Even on a Sunday, a rather busy place. Still later that same evening, at London Euston Station, the sleeper, the inner city sleeper, for Fort William, Scotland. And yours truly's little compartment. A real early shot just before dawn and my first view of Scotland. I'm now riding in reverse because the conductor says that during the night we go up the west coast line then east to Edinburgh, put a diesel on the back end of the train and pull backwards through Glasgow. We're crossing the 400 square mile wilderness known as the Rannach Moor. is a class 37 English electric diesel built somewhere between 1960 and 1965. 
They're 1,750 horsepower and capable of either 80 or 90 miles per hour for top speed. There's at least 300 of these still in use in 1991. We've arrived in Fort William. Where we view Class 37, the Ben Kirchen, doing a little switching. Moto rail is what they call it, and on the inner city sleepers of any distance, you can have your automobile placed on a freight car or passenger car and brought to the other end of the line. Fort William is nestled at the foot of Ben Nevis, Britain's highest mountain, at 4,406 feet. Yes, they do do some skiing up there, although not in September for certain. Well, of course, it wouldn't be complete without a steam engine, would it? Black 5, number 5407 of London Midland and Scottish Railway, built in 1937 to a Stanier design. It's a 460, has 72-inch drivers, and will be our power on our excursion up to Malig. The 41-mile-long West Highlands Extension Railway was opened in 1901 from Fort Williams to Maleg. It was quickly absorbed into the London, excuse me, the North British Railway. Sir Robert McAlpine and Sons were the contractors for the line, and his use of concrete for bridges, buildings, and retaining walls got him the nickway nickname Concrete Bob.
This is one of Scotland's lochs. This is Loch Eilt. The weather has gotten steadily worse, and we are now arriving in Maleg. Maleg is a fishing town and also the gateway to the Isle of Skye, which upon this ferry is our next stop. It's approximately a half hour ride from Maleg up to the Isle of Skye. Not a whole lot of views when there's this gloom and doom out there. We're now arriving in Armourdale on the Isle of Skye. And our next journey across the Isle of Skye is on this vintage ferry coach on a single lane highway on vintage blacked up. And then from Kyle Kane on a free ferry boat ride across to Kyle of La Couch. Looks just like that one. Well, here we are at the Kyle of LaCouche, and this Class 37, the Institution of Railway Single Engineers, will be our power on the 82-mile ride from the Kyle of LaCouche to Inverness, and our ride from the Atlantic to the North Sea. 
passing along the appropriately named Sound of Sleet. Next day, 24th of September, a Tuesday, and Inverness to Thruzo. We're riding a class 156 four unit set. Maximum speed is 75 miles an hour on this train. And we begin at 0711 in the morning. Here we pass a number of North Sea oil rigs. Actually, this is a sound of the North Sea. On our trip, 161 miles north from Inverness. Today's weather is a little bit better, and occasionally we'll see a few rainbows. Carbisdale Castle, a youth hostel, and one of the numerous castles along this line. A little off and on rain. and a view of the North Sea. Georgemus Junction and the junction with the line that goes north to Thurso or east to Wick. Half the train goes onward and our half of the train will reverse our line and head north to the most northerly point on British Rail.
at Thurso. Here we've arrived in Thurso. This is the gateway to the Orkley, Orkney Islands. Next day, the 25th of September, a Wednesday, and we've arrived in Aberdeen. Aberdeen is kind of oil center for all of the North, Sh North Shore oil drilling. And is land of the very thick Scottish brogue. Here's the Aberdeen station. And we're loading up our intercity train headed south. Here's a class 56 diesel on a light move, 3,250 horsepower. And here we do head south, Aberdeen to London King's Cross Station. Dundee marks the first of two major bridges that we will cross today. This one is the Tay Bridge. The original Tay Bridge was built in 1879 and destroyed in a gale on December 28, 1899, killing 78 people. The new Tay Bridge, designed by W.H. Barlow, opened in 1887 and continues today as Europe's largest and longest bridge at 2 miles 364 yards. The second bridge we'll cross is the fourth bridge. Opened March 4th, 1890, it was designed by Sir John Fowler and Sir Benjamin Baker. This steel cantilever bridge consists of two spans of 1,710 feet each, with a total length between the abutments of 8,298 feet. It bridges the Firth of Forth on the Dundee to Edinburgh line.
south of Edinburgh, and now we're on the East Coast Main Line. Mile after mile, clocked at 30 seconds per mile for a speed of 120 miles an hour. The average speed from Edinburgh to London is 93 miles an hour with two stops at Newcastle and York. Before our arrival at London's King's Cross Station. After a quick crosstown tube ride, we arrive back at London Victoria Station and a chance to view the afternoon rush hour with the third rail electrics. One final treat was to be able to view the Orient Express stock, pulled and pushed by two Class 73 diesel electric electrics as they left after bringing passengers in from a, an outing in the country. The Class 73s uh, are designed to run from on 660 to 850 volt DC third rail and a 600 horsepower diesel for de uh, running with non-electrified area. They were built in 1965 to 1967 by English Electric at the Vulcan Foundry. Thursday, September 26th, and it's time to return home via the Gatwick Express, which runs every 15 minutes from London, Victoria to Gatwick Airport.
one will final pass through Clapham Junction. Well, here's good old Gatwick. These don't really count as trains because they run on rubber tires, but... Hey, it moves. It's on rails, sort of. Well, thank you for joining us, joining me specifically, on my 1991 excursions to England. Tapes number three and four will give you a look at more of England from 1993. England and the Isle of Man. So I hope you'll join me for those programs also.